know, this song has been a blessing to somebody already. Let me just play it one more time for her. Before we go into the opening, God bless you, Sister Joan. I can see this one is ministering to you already. Amen. I through the long dark night. Through the long dark night.
the glory, great things he hath done. So love the world that he gave us his son, who healed his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life's gate that all may enter in. This evening I am grateful to the Almighty God for one more opportunity to be in his presence, to lift him up, and to exalt his holy name. I don't know about you this evening, beloved, but despite the challenges, despite my setbacks, amen, despite my disappointments and all the negatives that came my way, I have made it up in my mind this evening, beloved, that I will bless the Lord at all times and that his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. No wonder why the psalmist says, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear their half and be glad. He recognized that God is too big for him to praise him by himself. So the psalmist said, Come, let us magnify the Lord with me. Come magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let us make mention, beloved, that his name be exalted. And so this evening as we are here, we are here for no other reason but to magnify and to exalt the most holy name, the name of Jesus. No wonder why the, the, the song man put it this way, wherever I am, I'll praise him. Whenever I can, I'll praise him. I'll praise the name of Jesus. I'll lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus has lifted me. Praise God. And so I am proud this evening to be a child of the living God, a son of God. Amen. And so I am always grateful for every opportunity that is granted unto me to actually enter the presence of the Lord to worship. And this is no exception, brothers and sisters, as so many things that happened to so many other persons through the course of today. But guess what? I am alive. Not just I, but we are alive and well. We are in our right mind, praise God. We are on this Facebook Live tonight, and the fact that we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are able to join the live, that means that our minds are intact. Amen. Our mental faculties are in tune. And so this evening we are grateful to the Almighty God. And I believe that we ought to be more grateful to Him because there are many others on the outside who are out of their minds. They have lost everything. They have lost all that they had. Amen. But guess what? We may lose a few things. Amen. But we, have, we, we still have our praise. We still have our worship. Amen. Our faith is still in the Almighty God. And for that, brothers and sisters, we ought to be grateful. The Word says, a man's life is not consistent, consistent in, in the abundance of things that he possesses. Amen. What, 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 what uh, work for us, beloved, amen, is the fact that we have life in our bodies. God breathed into us the breath of life. Amen. And he, he preserved us. He kept us. When you think about how many accidents took place on the road today, and, and, and you look at yourself and you know that you are not better than those who, who were involved in those accidents, it's all because of grace and mercy. You should have fallen, your soul cast out, but mercy rewrote your life. We have been given a new opportunity, a new lease on life. God has given us, amen, this opportunity even to come on this Facebook live, amen, on, the, on a Wednesday night or a midweek prayer service. Praise God. Maybe we have persons who were with us last week, but for some reason they aren't with us this evening. For some, amen, unfortunate reason. But guess what? We are here. We are alive and well. And as I said earlier, we might have lost some things through the course of the day. Some of you may lost a little money. You may feel sick, uh, a little headache somewhere there, pain in the body like myself, and a little pain in the chest. Amen. But we, we, we are still here and we are worshiping God. We have all right to magnify Him. Amen. We have all right to glorify Him. And so I want to thank Him for His mercies and for his love and as i always say i don't take it for granted beloved the fact that you take the time out of your busy schedules amen to join this life so that we can have fellowship together amen the world is has changed everything about the world has changed 
including church and the way we do church. Amen. And so it, it, church is being done virtually now, but thanks be to God, the church is not the building. It wasn't the building from the beginning. Amen. The word church comes from the Greek ecclesia, which means the call out ones. So as long as we have, we have been called out of the world, amen, we're a part of the body of Christ. And we don't need to be at the same geographical location to have church. God, the word of God says, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So wherever we are over the world, amen, all over the globe, as long as we are together in the spirit, we are the church of the living God. And the word says, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell cannot and will not and shall not prevail against it. Amen. And so I welcome you all once more to this Wednesday night prayer service. I want to make special mention of a few persons. Vandis McClacken, Mother, God bless you. Amen. God bless you as you view tonight. Evangelist Judith Bailey, God bless you. Amen. Evangelist Cecilia Witter, God bless you. Amen. Get well soon. Praise God, prayers are being offered up for you. Missionary Malcolm, Missionary Anderson, Missionary Campbell, all the other missionaries of the Agape Church of God, all our brothers and sisters, those who are viewed from other congregations, those who are viewed from no congregation, but you view on a Wednesday night and on a Sabbath, I want to welcome you all, my biological family who are viewing, amen, I, I can see um, sisters and brothers and cousins too. Amen, and neighbors and friends. I just want to welcome you all, amen, to this wonderful, wonderful prayer service. And we open just tonight that as we worship the Lord together, that we will all be beneficiary of the wonderful blessing that the presence of the Lord brings. Amen, the words, in His presence there is fullness of joy, and at His right hand there are pleasure forevermore. Amen. Let me say one more time. Welcome and to all our first time viewers. A special, special, super special welcome to you. May your hearts be blessed tonight. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just blend your voices and let us blend our voices rather than our hearts together. As we sing this little refrain to open our prayer service. A very old one. But I believe it, it is very relevant for the time and for this service. God bless you as we go into a life-changing Holy Ghost prayer service. Let us sing together, beloved. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, it's worship time, beloved. Pure and holy, tried and true, tried and true. With thanksgiving, come on, come on. I'll be a living,
take about 30 seconds and magnify him even now. He is worthy, beloved. From the rising of the sun unto the going down, he is to be magnified. Come on, everybody. Amen. Let's take a few moments. Take about 30 seconds of your time. Amen. Let's magnify the Lord for he is good, for his mercies endure it forever. Come on. Amen. Our souls shall make a boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Come on, somebody. Let us magnify him as he is an awesome God. Magnificent God he is. He is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent God. Come on, he is the almighty creator. From the crown of our head unto the sole of our feet, oh God almighty God is to be magnified. Come on, somebody. Oh, bless the Lord, for he is good, for his mercies endure it forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are worthy, O oh God. You are worthy. You are to be glorified. You are to be magnified. You are great, God, and you do miracles so great. There is no one like else unto you, God Almighty. No one like unto you. You are great and powerful. You are Almighty God. Yes, Lord, you are mighty, you are mighty in battle. Oh, God, great El Shaddai. Yes, Lord, great El Elohim, you are God Almighty. Yes, we worship you, Father. Yes, Yah, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen, beloved. All of us on this live tonight, everybody on this live, eh, welcome. Amen, Missionary Anderson, God bless you. Everybody in this life tonight, praise God. Everyone in this life, let us pray. Every person, as long as you're on this life, whether, I'm, whether you're in the, the, the 41 person that we can see, or 40 persons, amen. I know others are viewing from the outside. I'm going to invite you too to join in this united prayer. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We give you glory and praise. It is to you, God Almighty, that all glory belongs. And so, Father, we come lifting our hands. We come lifting our shout and our praise. And our worship to you, God Almighty. Oh, the psalmist declared that we should enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We should be thankful unto you and bless your name for you are good and your mercies are everlasting. Your truth and dear to all generations. Father, we pray you will just wash us tonight as we enter your presence, as we enter behind the veil, that you will consecrate us, Heavenly Father. Help us, God. Not to, not to be presumptuous, God, but help us as we come to lay our hall and the altar of sacrifice. Because I know, Father, we have sinned in so many ways and, and thoughts, in our thoughts and our deeds, and even in our words that we speak, the places that we have gone to. Oh, God, we have sinned. And so, Father, we pray that you forgive us as a people. Cleanse us and, and purge us of all unrighteousness. And help us, God, that when we enter before your presence tonight, you will not turn away from us. But God Almighty, you will turn away from our sin, but you'll embrace us tonight. Father, we pray for divine covering, divine providence. We pray, God, for divine intervention. Give us, oh God Almighty, a holy visitation tonight as we seek you, Lord God, in prayer and in the reading of your words. We pray, Father, that you'll give us a revelatory experience. Reveal yourself to us, Father, in a way you have never done before. And help us, God Almighty, that when you have revealed yourself, like Isaiah will declare, Woe, it's me. Father, we pray tonight, God Almighty, for divine revelation. Let tonight be one that is exceptionally, oh God Almighty, filled with your spirit. So at the end of tonight's worship, God, sickness will be healed. Burdens will be rolled away, God Almighty. Yokes will be broken. Father, doubt, oh God Almighty, will be settled. 
in the name of Jesus. Give us a, a word tonight from the throne room. Lord God, speak to us as never before. And while you are speaking to us, Father, give us receptive hearts so that the words that you will be speaking won't leave us, but God, they will take root in our hearts. Bless us, Father, we pray. And those who are coming, I pray that you'll bring them on speedily so that they too can receive the blessings of Mount Zion. Grant us peace, we pray. And those are one who are online tonight who are troubled in their minds, God Almighty, I pray that you will settle those minds and help them to listen and to get that word that you want them to receive for this season. Hear and bless now, Father, we pray. We wait upon you and we say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. <coughs> Before we go into the, med uh, the meditation scripture for the night, uh, the passage that we'll be meditating on, I just want to welcome those who came on after the official welcome was done. Amen. God bless you tonight, and I trust that you too, as you join, amen, will receive the blessing from Mount Zion. And for those who are viewing for the first time, again, I want to say a special welcome, a super welcome to you. May God bless you and bless your family. Amen. We'll be going into the word of the Almighty God tonight. And the scripture that will be read tonight comes to us from Isaiah chapter 38. And I'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 7. Isaiah chapter number 38. Isaiah chapter number 38. I'll be reading from verse 1 to verse 7. And it says, in those days, Ezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Ahaz, went to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, Seek, set your house in order, rather, for you shall die and not live. Then Ezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done what, I, what is good in your sight. And Ezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah saying, Go and tell Ezekiah, thus said the Lord, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of, the Assy of Assyria. And I will defend this city. And this is the sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Praise God. This is a very powerful passage of scripture tonight. Um, one of my favorite, I must say, amen, I believe that there is something that the Lord has to say to us through this passage of scripture. Amen. I want us just to get our hearts in tune tonight. I promise you I won't be long, but I will deliver as the Lord would have me to. Amen. Praise God. And so, let me find what I refer to as the song of meditation. Amen. Yes. So I'll be pray playing for us tonight the, the song of meditation while amen, we get ready for the word of the Almighty God. I'll be ministering for the few minutes. I'll be here on the subject, Get Your House in 
order. Get your house in order. Be blessed by this song tonight. Thank you.
Thank you, Jesus. I pray we all be ready for the return of the Almighty God. Yes, Lord. I pray we all be ready. Not be getting ready. Amen. Not be caught as the five foolish virgins, but be ready like the five wise virgins who had oil in their lamps and also had in the reserve. Are you with me tonight? Amen. So I want to share with us tonight on the subject, uh, get your house, set your house rather, set your house in order. I want to say to us that as the body of Christ, we, we have learned from the scriptures and we believe most of us, if not all of us, with all of our hearts, amen, that the reason why we live the life that we live, in other words, the reason why we live Christian life is simply because we know that um, life won't be like this forever. Amen. There is coming a day when time will be no more and we will no longer govern, be governed by time, but time will be changed to eternity as we believe according to the Holy Scriptures that one of these days, not too long from now, I believe with all my heart that um, the Lord is going to appear, is going to return as when he was on earth, he did promise that he is coming back for us, his people. He told his disciples, amen, that is, it is expedient that he go, amen, and when he go, he's going to send the comforter, amen. And, and, and over there in Acts, when he was about to ascend, uh, when he was ascending rather into the cloud, Amen. There were men, I think it was two or three, the Bible said, men standing in white apparel, I presume those were angels of the Lord, who, who then looked at the disciples while they steered at Christ going up. And he said to them, he said to the disciples, He men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up in the sky? You see that same Jesus you see going up there? He will return in like manner. So just as you see him now, he's vis he, he, you can see him visibly going up. That's how he's going to return. And, 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 and understand, brothers and sisters, in the book of Thessalonians, it also explained to us a little bit of what the coming of the Lord will be like. Amen. It speaks profoundly about those who die in Christ. Amen. The, the, there will be a trumpet, and when that trumpet is blown, when that trumpet is sung, when they hear the trumpet, those who are buried, died and buried in Christ. Amen. Those who are buried in Christ will rise first. In fact, those are the only ones that will hear the trumpet. Amen. Just because they die in Him. Amen. And the Bible said that they shall rise from the dead. They shall get up from the dead. And uh, amen, they shall be caught up, praise God, to meet the Lord in the air. Because you understand, the Bible says, amen, that, that, that John in, in, in Revelation, he, he, he got a vision. And the vision that John got, John said, he, he saw a new heaven and a new earth. And in the vision, he says that the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. And there was no more sea. Amen. So John says, based on what he saw, amen, he saw that new Jerusalem, praise God. He saw that city in the vision, and that city was on the move. In other words, John said, he saw that city, the new, not the old, but the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Are you with me? So then, um, so, 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 so it is that new city that John saw in Revelation, amen, that, that the Apostle Paul is actually speaking of in Thessalonians when he says, 
that those who die in Christ shall rise first and they shall be caught up to meet the Lord, amen, in the here, praise God, they shall meet him in that new Jerusalem that John saw coming down. So, so understand the, 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 what the scripture is saying, that no man will be going to heaven. The Bible never teaches that. The Bible says that that new Jerusalem that John saw coming down, um, those who die in Christ shall meet him right there. And those who are alive and remain shall be quickly changed. And this is the word of God in the twinkling of an eye. In other words, they shall be transferred from one body to another. They shall be transferred from one from the immortal body to, from the mortal body rather to the immortal body. Amen. A body that cannot be penetrated by anything. And we shall, those who are alive and remain shall be changed and shall meet those who, who, who were risen from the dead with Christ in the air. So there shall be a great meeting up in the air. Amen. In that new city that John saw coming down from God out of heaven. And there, amen, the saints shall reign with him for a thousand years that is referred, referred to as the millennial period. All right. For a thousand years. Amen. And so, so understand, brothers and sisters, we believe, as I said, that there is going to be a, 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 a difference in this world. Praise God. When Christ comes, things won't be the same. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we live this way because we want to be a part of that great meeting up in that cloud in the here when the saints shall meet God. Be, Amen. In that new Jerusalem that we that, that John saw in the vision coming down from God out of heaven. And so, brothers and sisters, no wonder why sometimes we feel like backsliding, but we, we refuse to backslide because when we think of what we will be missing out on, Amen. And the Bible did say that the saints, Amen, shall be placed in a different place from those who are not saved. Amen. There is a place prepared for the wicked. Amen. And the Bible said uh, the wicked, those abominable people shall have their place, their lot on part with their old adversary in the lake of fire. And so that's why we live the way we live because we believe the scriptures. Many of you don't believe. They say it's not real. But let me tell you something as the day follow the night is going to appear, brothers and sisters. And so we live this way because we want to be a part of the kingdom of the almighty God. We want to reign with him. That's why we suffer with him. So that we can reign with him in his eternal kingdom. And so brothers and sisters understand that there are certain things while we're living a good Christian life. That we got to keep in mind. Because though we're waiting for his appearing brothers and sisters. Though we're waiting for him to show up, amen, to burst that cloud and to have one foot in the in the, in, 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 in um in, in, in that 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 and the hurt and one in the here, amen. We are we are still expecting, brothers and sisters, that we, we we make sure that our 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 highs are dotted and our T's are crossed. In other words, we have to ensure that our calling and our election sure. Because there is something that you need to be fearful of. And when I use the word fear, I, 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 I don't want to be taken out of context because the saints should not fear death. Because for the saints, death is just a transportation out of this world. Though we love this world so much, I can be honest, we love life and we love this world. We like the, the pleasures of the world, the goodness of this world. Yes, we like it. Amen. Amen. And so understand that though we love the world and the, the goodness and the blessings that we enjoy in this world, understand that before the coming of the Almighty God, there is something that is called death. Mm -hmm. Something that is called death that may just strike, it will strike some before the coming of the Almighty God. But when, he, when Christ returns, brothers and sisters, not all will taste death. Because in 1 Corinthians 15, and, and from verse 50 down, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery that we shall not all sleep. This word sleep means that we shall not all die, but we all shall be changed. In other words, when he appears, persons will be alive in 
this world. Praise the name of the Lord. So understand that you might be alive when you come and or you might die before you come. So the problem that we have, most of us are getting ready for the return of Christ. But we, we, we miss out on something that is very, very, very important that we keep in our mind. Because it is the Apostle Paul then in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 that says, and, at is, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after death comes the judgment. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Death is appointed unto us as human beings. And after death comes judgment. So death for us brothers and sisters, as I said, for the people of God, is just a transportation to take us from amen, this dreadful world into a different place. The word says to be absent amen, from this world is to be present with the almighty God. Are you with me? And so we've got to, we've got to bear in mind that just as we're preparing our hearts for the return of Christ, we are to take the very same initiative in preparing our souls just in case death comes before the kingdom of God. Are you with me? Brothers and sisters, understand that death is something that we are not to take lightly. Death is something that we are to take very seriously. Death is the enemy of this world. Amen. Death is here to destroy. Amen. To, 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 take, the, to take away the lives of the, the, the people of God. And so brothers and sisters, one of the things that you've got to bear in mind is that death has no respect for nobody. Death has no is a respect of no man. Amen. You could be rich, you could be poor, you could be black, you could be white. Amen. Your name, it doesn't matter who. Your family background, what name, your name could be so prominent. You may come from a prominent family. I don't care where you're from, how much money you have. Death is not afraid of any one of us, brothers and sisters. The only thing death is afraid of is the fact that when it strikes, amen, he finds us in the arms of the Almighty God. That's the only victory that we can have over death. And victory is given, amen, because Christ being the first fruit, amen, who was risen from the dead, he gave us victory, brothers and sisters. In fact, he died so that we can live. Brothers and sisters, understand what I'm trying to say to us tonight, that death is no respect of, of person. It is, amen, Ezekiah tonight, who was the 13th king, who ruled over Judah. He had everything that he so desired as a king. He was wealthy. Amen. And he was also a righteous man. And understand brothers and sisters that he too though he was righteous. Though he was rich. He was godly. Amen. He, he, he had a lot of, a lot of possession rather. Amen. But guess what? Death knocked at his door. Death knocked at his door, brothers and sisters. Amen. The Bible would have us know. Amen. According to Isaiah chapter 38, it says, In those days, Ezekiah was sick and near death. Death was knocking at Ezekiah's door, brothers and sisters. And understand that though he was the king, amen, of Judah, death wasn't afraid of him I, um, Ezekiah was sick unto death praise God and a matter of fact God has already signed off to Ezekiah's death because God spoke to Isaiah and said I want you to go down to Ezekiah the king of Judah and I want you to tell Ezekiah that I God said to tell him that he has to get his house in order. In other words, amen, God has already planned, amen, the, the, the date and time for Ezekiah's death. God has already signed it off and maybe has already assigned the death angel to cut him off at a certain period, amen. But God gave him the opportunity by saying to Isaiah, go to him. And tell him, I, God, said to tell him to get his house in order. 
In other words, when God said to Isaiah, go and tell Ezekiah, get his house in order, he wanted Ezekiah to make up what the old church would call his jewel. In other words, for some of us who still don't understand, there are some baggages that you're carrying that if you die with those baggages, you are going to hell. Are you with me? There are some persons that you have in your stomach that you have not spoken to in years. You are keeping malice with them. Praise God, you are to get them out of your heart and make peace with them because, amen, you shall die and not live. That's what God was saying. In other words, he was saying there are some folk, praise God, that you did wrong and you need to go and apologize to them because... Amen. Death is knocking at your door. You shall surely die and not live. Brothers and sisters, hear me tonight. All of us as human beings at some point in our lives, and some of us even now as you are watching this live, you are at a place where you know that if Christ returned right now, that you would be in some serious trouble. Amen. And let me, let me, let me don't go that far. If Death should knock at our doors tonight. Can I ask the question? If death should knock at our doors tonight, amen, from where we are in our conscious state, what would be the only thing that would cause us to, 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 uh, to, to, to be in trouble with our soul or to be in trouble with the Almighty God? What do you think, brothers and sisters? Just think in your mind what it is that would have put you in trouble with the Almighty God. We are conscious people and all we need in our consciousness is what we call, amen, um, uh, I'm, I'm looking for the word, praise God, I'm looking for the word, amen, I'm looking for the word. What we need in our con with, with our consciousness is, 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 is conscience, yes. We need to be, to, to exercise, to show, or to, to, to demonstrate our conscience. To, 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 to actually stop lying to ourselves and to the Holy Spirit. Because we know, brothers and sisters, where we have gone wrong. We know, brothers and sisters, the things that we are doing, the things that we are thinking about, the places that we are going, the persons that we, we, we hold grudges against, the persons that we have spoken to, amen, for such a long time. We know all the mess that we are in. Brothers and sisters, that would have given us, a, that would have put us in a position tonight where our souls would be in trouble with the Almighty God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. If there is one thing that you can come up with tonight that would cause you to be in trouble with the Almighty God, I want you to set your house in order. I'm not declaring or prophesying death over you. What I'm saying tonight, brothers and sisters, is that we don't know all the possibilities. And living in this dreadful world where so many things are happening, there are so many ways, amen, that one can die. The COVID-19, my God, has taken over the world. It's out of control. And not just the COVID-19, but murder, killing, shooting. Oh, God Almighty, blood, touching blood. Oh, God Almighty, the lives of people are just being ushered out. The young people are going missing every single day. You check Facebook, you find another young person gone missing. Brothers and sisters, hear me. We don't know, God Almighty, the next move of the enemy. We don't know what will happen to us. The Bible did not tell us as people. People of God, how we will die. The Bible never tell us, brothers and sisters, that we won't die by the gun, that we won't die by the knife. My God, that we won't die by certain things. What the Bible did speak about is that we are to fix ourselves so if death should come, Lord God Almighty, we will be at the place where our souls will be secure in the hand of the Almighty God. And because this world has gotten out of control, brothers and sisters, it affords us, brothers and sisters, to set our houses in order. We don't know who will be next. The reality is, death is appointed unto us, beloved. 
my God, and uh, don't try to fool yourself saying that everything is going to be all right. Uh, and I'm speaking faith, I'm speaking life. Uh, all of us speak life. And a matter of fact, today I spoke life over myself and my family. I declare we shall not die, but we shall live and be clear. But understand that though we speak life, we still have to keep in our mind the purpose of the Almighty God for our lives. We don't know the will of God for our lives. So it afford us, brothers and sisters, to set our houses in order because some of us are really stubborn. Some of us are, are, are self-willed. My God, some of us are good malice keepers. Some of us know how to do other things and play the victim and make it seem as though others are doing us things. Some of us know how to be rude and out of order. Even in the body of Christ, some of us know how to be disrespectful. We don't regard our, our, each other. We don't regard our leaders. We don't regard anybody. But I want to send a word out to, to somebody tonight, to Bishop Malcolm, and to everybody. We are we are to set our houses in order because the word of God said to uh, Ezekiah, "You shall die and not live, my God." I, I want the body of Christ to understand tonight that we're living on a time bomb and every morning that we get up from off our bed, we ought to get up with a praise in our mouth. We ought to get up with a song in our heart because it's not that we're better than those who slept away, amen, and did not wake in the morning. It's not that we're better than those whose doors were kicked off and they're gone down. My God, it's not that we were better, we're better than those who were consumed in fire that took their houses in the night. We're not better than them. So every morning that we get up, we need to open our mouth and tell the Lord, thank you for many other blessings that you give unto me. Blessings overflowing like a mighty sea. Lord, I want to thank you. Amen, brothers and sisters. Hear me, hear me, hear me. None of us know the minute nor the hour when God is going to show up. None of us know either when death is going to knock at our door. And so I'm saying tonight, like Isaiah said to Ezekiah, get your house in order. Are you with me tonight? And so brothers and sisters, Ezekiah, when he heard the word of the Almighty God, when he heard that he, he ought to set his house in order, my God, I, one thing I love about him though, amen, he, I love his attitude, I, I, I love his attitude, because the Bible said what he did is started talking to the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. As the Bible said that Ezekiah turned his face up towards the wall and prayed to the Lord. Amen. Ezekiah prayed to the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray. Oh, I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart. And have done what is good in your sight. And Ezekiah wept bitterly. My God, thank God Ezekiah was an upright man. He could have reminded God all the things that he did. And how he lived righteously. The question is tonight, if death should knock at our door. If God should send one of his prophets, one of his servants to say to you, brother, so and so, our sister, so and so, the sickness that you have in your body, God said to tell you, you shall not die, you shall not live, but you shall die. What will you do? Will you, will you rebuke the messenger? Or will you cry out to the Almighty God? In fact, I would cry out to the Almighty God. But the reality is, if I should make a bargain with God, can I speak like Ezekiah speak? Can I remind God of the things that I did in his sight that was right? Can I share the same testimonies that Ezekiah shared? Can I say to God, God, remember how I walked upright and I did 
right in your sight. Can I say like Ezekiah? <coughs> My God, I, 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 I want the body of Christ to understand tonight that everything that we do, every word that comes from our mouth, every action, every thought will testify against us. Ezekiah could speak to God in the way he did because he indeed walked upright. He lived the life of righteousness. So if we are to ask God to lengthen our days, if we are to ask God to grant us a favor based and things that we have done can we say like Ezekiah I have walked upright can we use the word to God remember God remember because we know we know we know that the things that we have done in life some of us don't want to say God remember we don't want God to remember that can we can we honestly say God remember My God, some of us, the only, the only thing we can say to God with the word remember, we can say, Lord, remember, I am human, but humans and humans forget. That's the only thing we can say, Lord, remember. But I'm saying to the body of Christ tonight, set your house in order. Malice keeper, set your house in order. Homosexuals, set your house. Lesbians in church, set your house in order. Backbiters, my God. Amen. Evil concupiscence, my God. Whatever it is that, that, that you have in your life that would put you in trouble with God, set your house in order. Rebellious people in the house of God, set your house in order. Rebellious wife. Rebellious husband, cheating wife, cheating husband, set your house in order. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People of God, it is high time to arise and understand that it's not playing time. I spoke to you last week about Samson, how he played with the gift of God and his life. Playing time is up. It's time to set our houses in order. Jesus, it's time to make our wrongs right and our crooked path straight. People who are keeping malice with their neighbors, we have people in the church who are malice in their neighbors. It's time to set your houses in order. Thank you, Jesus. So Ezekiah spoke to God. He said, listen to me, God, remember. And God heard Ezekiah. And no doubt God said, indeed, Ezekiah, you have tried your best. You have walked to the best that you could. And before Isaiah could reach where he was going, God called him and sent him back to Hezekiah and said, go back to Hezekiah, tell him I've heard his prayer. Tell Hezekiah, I've heard his prayer, I've seen his tears. Tell Hezekiah, I have heard him and I have seen his tears and because of the life that he lived, I will have 15 more years to his days. Understand brothers and sisters. Understand, brothers and sisters, that God had 15 more years to Ezekiah's life. <coughs> when I studied Isaiah, Ezekiah's sickness, I recognized from, a, from one school of thought, that Ezekiah had a serious boil on his body. And that boil that he had was so severe, it was so infected that 
The content of the boil basically poisoned his body. All that was festered up in the boil poisoned his body and was about to kill him. Death was pronounced over Ezekiah. But God gave him 15 more years. Don't further down it speak of what you refer to as a sundial. Because God was using the sundial as a sign that is going to lengthen Ezekiah's days. The sundial is something that is used in ancient days to, measure, to, to tell the time of the day. It works with shadow. So when it is overshadowed, it will basically move and tell you what time it is. But God didn't use the sundial that day to tell the time of the day. The sundial was symbolic of the fact that God has lengthened Ezekiah's life. Are you with me? And further down, I think verse 9 down, it says, This is the writing of Ezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and had recovered from his sickness. So listen to some of what Ezekiah said while he was sick. Ezekiah bargained with God, brothers and sisters. According to verse 10, it says, Ezekiah speaking now. Because as he lay on his deathbed, his sick bed, about to die, he had doctors because he was a king. So he could afford any amount of doctors he wanted to be around his bed. And the matter of fact, being the king that was due unto him. And so as um, Ezekiah being the king, he had numerous amount of doctors around him. And he also had the scribes writing as he spake. Are you with me? So as uh, Ezekiah spoke, he says in verse 10, and I said, in the prime of my life, I shall go to the gates of Sheol. I am deprived of the remainder of my years. In other words, Ezekiah was saying, the rest of his years, he is being deprived of. God is taking away the rest of his years. I said, verse 11, I shall not see Yah. The Lord in the land of the living. I shall observe man no more among the inhabitants of the world. My lifespan is gone, taken from me like a shepherd's tent. Understand, brothers and sisters, that a tent speaks of um, something that is temporary. A tent speaks of something that is temporary, not permanent. So he was saying his life is like a shepherd tent that was just taken from him just like that. I have cut off my life like a weaver. He cut me off from the loom from day until night. You make an end of me. He says in verse 13, I have, con I have considered until morning like a lion, so he breaks all my bones from day until night. You make an end of me like a crane or a swallow, so I chattered. I mourned like a dove. My eyes failed from looking upward. Oh Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? This is Ezekiah speak. He said, What shall I say? He has both spoken to me, and he himself has done it. I shall walk carefully all my years in the bitterness of my soul. Oh Lord, these things men live, and in all these things. In the life of the spirit. 
so you will restore me and make me live. Indeed, it was for my own peace that I had great bitterness, but you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. This was when he received, amen, that word that he shall live. He started giving God praise. For you have cast all my sins behind your back. For sure cannot thank you. Death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your truth. The living, yes, the living man, he shall praise you. As I do this day, the Father shall make known your truth to the children. In other words, he was saying to God, God, the dead cannot praise you. I cannot praise you in my dead state. Only the living can praise you. Those who gone down in the pit, those who are buried in the grave cannot praise you. And he also said something. He said to God, the Father shall make known your truth to the children. In other words, he was saying, God, if the Father is dead, who is going to make, make known the truth of you to his children? So he was saying to God, God, I am worth more to you alive than dead. This is what Ezekiah was saying to the Almighty God. Now the question is to us again, can we say like Ezekiah tonight, set your hopes in other brothers and sisters. The Lord, according to verse 20, was ready to save me. Therefore, we will sing my song with stringed instruments all the day of our life in the house of the Lord. Now, Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs and apply it as a poultice on the boil, and he shall recover. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So God knew the remedy. God knew what to do a long time ago before Ezekiah spoke. But Ezekiah spoke and God changed his mind and gave the remedy. Just rub that thing on the boil <laughs> and everything will be alright. He will recover. And Ezekiah had said, what is the sign that I should go up to the house of the Almighty God? The sign is the fact that God delivered him and extended his life. Brothers and sisters, as I close tonight, I did not say anything that is foreign to you all. What I brought to you tonight is simply the word of the Almighty God. Set your house in order because we don't know when he's going to appear. Neither do we know when death is going to knock at our door. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He that hasn't here tonight, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Brothers and sisters, I conclude with the theme for tonight. Set your house in order. God bless you tonight. God bless you. Some of you need to find some people in your workplace that you have been malicing. Yes? Some of you malice your bosses and your supervisors and some people and staff. You need to find them and set your house in order. Not talking about sweeping under your bed. Because some bed haven't been swept for a long time. Not talking about dusting down. Not talking about the, the, your, your, your literal, your physical dwelling where you live. Talking about your life. Talking about your life. Set your house in order. God bless you richly tonight. As you meditate on those few words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I think I want to play that same song that we played for the song of meditation. And I promise I'll be closing in about 10 minutes the most. We will go into another series of prayer. And this prayer that we'll be doing, united of course, where we'll be praying everyone from where we are. We are going to ask God to help us to set our house in order. We are going to ask God to consecrate us now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. Let our soul look up with a steadfast hope, and our will be lost in thine. I'll be playing the same song. I pray we all be ready. And I'll indicate to you tonight, brothers and sisters, at what point we will begin praying. Hallelujah. Everybody, let us blend our voices and just minister to ourselves with this song. Come on, open your mouth. I pray we we'll all be ready. We ought to be ready. We're all to be ready.
tonight. Amen. The Lord will help us because our, our righteousness is like filthy rounds. Amen. We are not worthy. We are unworthy brothers and sisters. We are not righteous at all. We are asking him to help us to set our house in order. Brothers and sisters, it's prayer time. Pray, beloved. Pray, beloved. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters. Commit yourself to the Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. Pray, beloved, pray. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We bless you tonight. We magnify you, Holy Father. Oh, God, we are crying out to you tonight knowing that father we are undone, we are so unworthy we have sinned against you God oh God we have done the abominable we have thought oh God about things that are not pure and so God almighty we pray even now as you send word to Ezekiel to set his house in order help us this evening that we too, Heavenly Father, we make our arms right and our crooked path straight. Help us, Holy God, that we too will make up our jewels. Oh, God Almighty, help us to make our calling and our election sword. Everything within us, God Almighty, that will prevent us from entering your kingdom if you shall so appear tonight. Or if death should strike us at any point, we pray, God, that anything that would have been a barrier preventing us from entering your presence, will you forgive tonight? Will you cleanse and deliver tonight? 
Oh God, as the song play the background, pass us not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear our humble cry while another star calling. Do not pass us by. God, we're dependent on you tonight. Lord God, we know other, no other source but you. We know no other one but you, God Almighty. We pray tonight for a cleansing. We pray, God, for a washing. Pray just tonight, Heavenly Father. Wash us with your efficacy, with your blood, with your efficacious blood. Oh God, the songwriter declare, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me all again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Father, we are looking to you tonight. We need a cleansing, Lord. We need a washing tonight. Oh God, we're waiting down here by the river when you come, Lord. If you don't come to our rescue, Lord, our souls will be lost. Father, we are looking to you, God, who is the hope of glory. Help us, Father, that everything within us, God, that is not in line with your words, that does not align itself with your will. We pray, God, that you remove them tonight. Every backbiting, every, oh God, hypocrisy, every jealousy, every envy, everything, Lord, every malice, God Almighty, everything that is within us that prevents us, God Almighty, from entering your throne or your presence. Purge us, Lord. Cleanse us and deliver, my God. Lord, every curse that has been hanging over our heads, every generational curse of the Father, we pray, God, tonight that you will break every curse in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you'll have your way tonight, Lord. Do for us tonight, Father, more than we can ask or even imagine. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God Almighty, that your name will be glorified in all that we do. Do for us tonight, Heavenly Father, more than we can ask or even imagine. Help us, Lord God, uh, to lay our all on the altar. As the song says, is your all on the heart of sacrifice? Does your all the spirit control? You can only be blessed and have peace and see the rest when we heal in our bodies and soul. Help us tonight to heal our bodies and soul. Help us to surrender. Oh God, help us to say all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. Remember all those who are viewing tonight. I pray God that they too, Father, will experience a washing. Cleanse them tonight. Purge them tonight. In the name of Jesus, sanctify them through thy truth, Lord. Thy word is true. Do God Almighty the impossible tonight. What God Almighty they can do for themselves, we pray God that you will do it. In the name of Jesus, oh God Almighty, help, oh God, as we know you are the help for the helpless. Oh God Almighty, help Lord, help Lord, for the godly man sees it. Here tonight, Father, we pray. And God, what we fail of asking, fail not to grant it unto us. While we look to you tonight, Father. Oh God, Daniel, God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God. Oh God Almighty, the God who answers by fire. The God who spake and it was done. The God who commanded and it stood fast. We pray, God Almighty. Oh, that whatever it takes, oh Father. For us, oh God, to get to that place where our houses are set in order. Fight for us tonight, Heavenly Father. Some of us are struggling with some circumstances that we cannot deal with by ourselves. Oh God, some are addicted to some lifestyle. Oh God, they need deliverance, but Father, they can't do it for themselves. We pray, God, that you will tear down every idol. Cast down every foe. Wash them now, Father, and make them whiter than snow. Rebuke, oh God, of the plan of the enemy. Tear down every principalities and powers. 
every spiritual wickedness in high places. Grant your people victory tonight. Grant them healing. Grant them deliverance. Grant them the breakthrough that they so desire. Heavenly Father, so that their lives can come in alignment with your will. Yes, Lord, we're depending on you tonight. We're depending on you, Father. Remember the sick. Heal them now. Remember the hospitals tonight. Oh, God, we pray that you heal every patient, every COVID-19 affected person. We pray, God, that you will touch their respiratory system. I pray, God Almighty, that you'll bring about stability. In the name of Jesus, heal and deliver. Set free, God, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Work through doctors and nurses, Heavenly Father. I pray, God, that you'll assign angels to move through those hospitals. And Lord, I pray that you'll inject, oh God, a spiritual vaccine into the bodies of your children. So, God Almighty, they will recover speedily. And Father, those, God Almighty, who have not uh, contracted the virus, I pray, God, that you will inject us, my God, with spiritual vaccine uh, so that we will not contract that virus. Uh, oh, God Almighty, your people are crying out tonight. Uh, oh, God, the world is crying out. Uh, my God Almighty, we beg you tonight that you will do something supernatural. Work, God Almighty, upon your people's behalf. Oh, God Almighty, prove yourself to be the mighty God that you are. My God, demonstrate supernatural power in this world so even the Holy Feast can recognize, oh God, that there is still a bomb in Gilead. Even those who are doubting God will recognize that you are still a healer divine. Lord God, even those, oh God, who close their minds and their hearts to the truth that there is no God like unto you. Oh God, we pray that you reveal yourself in the name of Jesus and let the world come to see you as God. Oh God Almighty, oh God, for there every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that you are Lord, that you are God. Do it for your glory. Do it for your name, say, Heavenly Father. Do it, my God. So doctors and scientists <coughs> and all those persons, oh God, who put their trust in medicine and everything else, will recognize that you are still, oh God, the Bob in Gilead, that you are still the rock of ages, and that you can still do exceeding abundantly above God. Do it for your glory, Heavenly Father. We're waiting upon you, God, because we know it is no secret what you can do, Heavenly Father, for what you have done for others. You can do it for your children tonight. Good God, we come to you tonight. We're looking to you, Lord, as the men look to their mistress, as the servant look to their masters. We're looking to you tonight. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, God who answers by fire, a pillar of fire by night, and a pillar of cloud by day. Oh God, the God who parted the Red Sea and give your people victory. The God Almighty who parted the river Jordan and granted Joshua and the Israelites. Oh God, a smooth passage. Oh God, into the promised land. We are looking to you tonight, Father, that you will part every medical Red Sea. Yes, Lord, every COVID Jordan. We pray, God, that you will part in the name of Jesus. Grant victory tonight, my God, as I stand as a Moses and I stretch out my rod tonight. We declare every sea will be parted tonight. Every medical sea, my God, every seas of sickness, we declare tonight that they shall be parted. God Almighty and your people shall go across and dry ground. Father, we are begging you tonight. Yes, Lord, walk through our homes, walk through our communities, walk through our towns, walk through our cities, walk through our streets. And I pray, God Almighty, that you will assign angels, oh God, with heavenly sanitizer to sanitize our communities, sanitize our homes, 
sanitize our streets, uh, sanitize our towns, uh, sanitize our cities. Uh, we pray, God Almighty, that you will wash down uh, with your holy washing tonight. Uh, God Almighty, I pray that there will be a miracle in the name of Jesus. Uh, doctors will begin to wonder what's happening. Uh, my God, nurses will begin to wonder what is happening. Oh God Almighty, oh God, scientists and even the health department, the world health system will begin to wonder what is happening. Oh God, work and miracle cause the years of the world to tingle. My God, speak in your action. Speak through your healing power. 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 God Almighty, open your wings. Cause healing. Oh God, to flow from your wings. Send it to the east. Send it to the west. Send it to the north. Send it to the south. In the name of Jesus. Somebody need healing tonight. Send your healing, God Almighty. Send it across this internet. Send it across this airwave. We beseech you, Heavenly Father. Healing is the children's bread. Cause healing, God Almighty, to spread across the length and breadth of this world. Causing the Chinese, the Spanish, oh God Almighty, the Indians, oh God Almighty, cause every nation to come to recognize that you are the God of our God Almighty. Yesterday, today, and forever, allow them to know that you are the God of the impossibility. Let them to know, Father, that what you cannot do cannot be done. And the last time I check, you can do exceeding abundantly above all. We beseech you, God, that you will do it for your people tonight. In the name of Jesus, break out a mighty revival. In the name of Jesus, break out a mighty revival. In the name of Jesus, break out a revival tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray God that you'll pass over. As you pass over Egypt, as you pass over Egypt, God Almighty, and you cause the death angel to take out the young man of the Egyptian. We pray God that you'll pass over the world. And I pray God that you will spray us. Pray, God Almighty, the atmosphere with, uh, with holy sanitizer. So, God Almighty, viruses and diseases, God Almighty, will begin to perish. We say perish. We say dry up. We say dry up tonight. We say dry up tonight. We say dry up tonight. We say burn with fire. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we speak it now by the power of the Holy Ghost that diseases and viruses shall be dried up. They shall be burned with fire, burned with fire, burned with fire. In the name of Jesus, we beseech you tonight, Heavenly Father, that they shall dry up and burn with fire. Not by might tonight, God Almighty, but by your spirit. Yes, Lord, by your spirit tonight. We declare it and we call it to be so as your words and because where your children we can speak those things that are not as though they are. We speak tonight that the, the, the viruses and diseases shall be dried up and burned with fire. Fire! In the name of Jesus. Do it for your glory, Lord. Do it for your glory, Lord. Do it for your glory tonight. So that man will know that there is no God like unto you. Here tonight, Father, as we look to you, Lord, and we say thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. 
Somebody type on your screen tonight, burn with fire. Just type on your screen tonight, burn with fire. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Burn with fire. Burn with fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. Keep them coming. Burn with fire. Burn with fire. That's the prayer of our hearts tonight. That it will be burned with fire. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Beloved, I trust that God has touched you tonight. I trust that you have received from the Almighty God all that you so desire from Him tonight. May I say to you that nothing is impossible with the Almighty God. If you can think it tonight, God can do it. Just align yourself with His will for your life. Just set your houses in order, brothers and sisters. And understand and don't get too fearful that when you set your houses in order, you are preparing for His coming or for death. Yes, when you set your house in order, you are also making room for blessing. Did I say blessing? Yes, when you set your houses in order, you are making room for blessing. Set your houses in order tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I have a few announcements. There's two announcements tonight. Two announcements. Ah. Uh, I want to announce tonight to those of the Agape Church of God Seventh Day. This announcement is for the members tonight. Um, there is another death. One Gloria Oilet from Sandy Bay. There is another death. For those of you who are part of the burial fund, there is another death. One Gloria Highlight from Sandy Bay Church. Please honor your financial obligation. All right. Please see Sister Carleen Gilbert and honor your obligation. Remember, our Lord's Supper will be on the 26th of this month. And I believe the theme for tonight is fitting as we are to set our houses in order in order for us to dine with the master. And as I said last week, the, 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 the strategy that we'll use this year is the same as last year. And the morning of the 16th, we will be at, ch at church and those of you who will be partaking with Lord's Supper, you can come by and pick up your emblems, all right, and take it home. Yes? You can come by and pick up your emblems and take it home, and we will be streaming in the evening as we did the last time. And you'll be instructed, you'll be instructed on how and when partake of the emblems all right and i think that's it for now we'll be having a couple of nights of prayer amen you can do it from your home i'll be in the days just sending the appropriate scriptures that you can read throughout the day and the night so we can keep our hearts in tune all right amen god bless you tonight and i trust god that you have received a word from him, may all that you so desire from the Almighty God come to pass as you set your house in order. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I'll be running from you very early tonight. I'll be running.
morning for me very early. But, but you know I won't let you off without playing something for you, right? God bless you. So here, here we go. Gloria Bailey with something very old. Yeah. 
God bless you, beloved. Have yourselves a glorious night in Jesus' name. God bless you. Love you all. Amen. God bless you.